Thank you, sir. Now we can start the class. So, on previous occasion, we were discussing about the features of modernity. And from that discussion, at least it would be very clear that modernity is a philosophical concept, epistemological concept, in which we should not be swayed by the outward behavior of the individual. Amman, hum log ye dekh kar ki kya dete hain? Uske dress se, uske kapde pahne ke ya aur uske style se ki bada modern aadmi. Lekin ye jo hum modernity ya aadmita shabd ka prayog karte hain, wo us sense mein hum nahi karte hain. In fact, that is called modernism. Modernism is a cultural aspect and modernity is a philosophical aspect. तो जो मॉडर्निटी के बारे में हम लोगों ने बात की वो ये कि कुछ उसके ग्रैंड प्रिंसिपल्स हैं नोन एज मेटा नैरेटिव ग्रैंड नैरेटिव और समटाइम्स मेगा नैरेटिव सो द देयर आर थ्री ग्रैंड पिलर्स ऑन व्हिच मॉडर्निटी स्टैंड्स एंड इट बिलीव्स दैट इफ वी गो बाय दोस प्रिंसिपल दोस ग्रैंड नैरेटिव then the condition of the people of this uh, of this globe that will improve Th that was that was the understanding and particularly this understanding developed in in uh, 19th and 20th century but by the end of 20th century people started thinking that no this the promises which modernity had made those promises could not be accomplished and therefore why sh should we remain slave of these mega narratives meta narratives and grand narratives better we should go for another option so the modernity is one term and its alternative is post modernity this term post modernity was for the first time used by arnold tonby arnold a r n o l d arnold tonby t o y n b e e tonby but the concept crystallized when in 1979 john franqua luta john j e a n john franqua f r a n c o i s john franqua lota l y o t a r d pronounced as john franqua lota ab spelling yaad rakhne ke liye isko aap chahe jaise bhi spell out kariye lekin that he wrote a report on education state of education that is called a report on knowledge colon a post modern condition now if we go by this report then certain features have are decipherable kuch uske lakshan hum dekh sakte hain jab hum baat ye karte hain ki hum post modernity ka matlab kya hai then certain things become very much prominent certain things come on the uh, on the surface what are they the first and foremost thing is that the concept of modernity the mega narrative that should be rejected means that the meta narratives of equality rationality and universality that should be rejected number 1 number 2 instead of talking about totality 
we should talk about difference and so far as post modernity is concerned it is not united it is fragmented some will say that post modern condition is that condition in which plurality of culture is permitted to 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 stay to live those who have been a student of political science at one point of time then there are two theories regarding regarding culture one is called melting pot theory that all the persons they should merge into each other practicing and following same religious and cultural belief there should not be any difference and another is of mosaic culture where each and every grain of mosaic are distinct and have got their own own uniqueness and luster aap mosaic ko jab dekhenge to uske kai rang ke dane honge aur har dana apne dhar se chamakta hua hoga bahut distinct hoga और सब दाने एक तरह के नहीं होंगे तो एक तो थी यह है कि मेल्टिंग पॉट थ्योरी आपने एक बर्तन लिया उसी में सब कल्चर को डाल दिया और सब आपस में मिक्स हो गए सिमिलेट हो गए दैट इज वन अनदर इज इज मोजैक कल्चर सो व्हाट पोस्ट मॉडर्निटी इज सजेस्टिंग इज दैट इट इज नॉट ऑफ यूनिवर्सलिटी इट इज नॉट ऑफ टोटलिटी रादर इट इज प्लिटी ऑफ कल्चर दैट एग्जिस्ट इन सच सोसाइटी and therefore there will be a, a concept of difference not of totality then few will say that post modernity is in fact not a conceptual thing it has no history it it is very shallow it is only a stage of history a new epoch has come the earlier one has disappeared and in this epoch certain cultural changes will take place which will be in contradiction to or in contravention to the former one ya ek aisa samay kaal hai jisme jo ki pichle se bhinn hai aur इसके साथ साथ एक नए प्रकार के संस्कृति का अभ्युदय होगा तो इसके इस थ्योरी के अनुसार यह इसको ऐतिहासिक परिप्रेक्ष्य में देखती है यह एक ऐसा कालखंड है जिसमें कि हमको पुराने समय से परिवर्तन दिखाई पड़ेंगे किस तरह के परिवर्तन होंगे वह है कि हर व्यक्ति अपने आप में डिस्टिंग होगा या जिसको आप कहते हैं कि एक नए प्रकार का व्यक्तिवाद आएगा हर व्यक्ति अपने आप से जाना जाएगा देर विल बी नो कलेक्टिविज्म एवरी वन विल बी फ्री एवरी इंडिविजुअल विल हैव राइट्स एंड ड्यूटीज दैट काइंड ऑफ थिंग विल कम अपर इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग इज टू बी डिस्कस्ड इन द लाइट ऑफ फ्यू थिंकर इफ वी टेक द हेल्प ऑफ derida jacks derida then he says that deconstruction is the stage of post modern what is more visible in post modern condition is deconstruction now what how to define the word deconstruction deconstruction is to be understood with the help of one simple uh, statement that a word has got a meaning every word has got a meaning but no meaning is fixed for finality for its finality the meaning keeps on changing in other words if 
uh, the word which he uses for uh, for uh, uh, a particular word is signifier signifier means word and every signifier has a signified kya arth dena chahta hai now this signifier will always signify the same thing or not that is not correct it means that meaning of a particular word signifier is not perpetual is is not uh, what you call uh, sacrosanct it is not immortal rather meaning of the word will be changing so we should not go into that thing that um, meaning of the word will remain constant whenever the society moves a particular word also moves from its centrality and once it moves to peripherality once it comes to circumference then the distance which a word has traveled from its origin till its reception at the other end that is circumference various meaning must have must be given to or must have been given to that particular word take one simple example uh, and that example most of you will be appreciating that under indian penal code there is section 494 of the uh, section 494 dealing with the offense of bigamy now this section says whoever having a wife or husband living marries where such marriage is void this is the this is the expression this is the terminology used in section 494 now this offense happens to be strict liability offense i am not going to that the word is marries so what is the meaning of word marries at one point of time marriage means living together then another stage comes that marriage means where both the partner they believe themselves or treat themselves as husband and wife but significantly in seventh decade of uh, 20th century the supreme court said that word marries means whoever marries validly and what is valid marriage marriage is said to be valid marriage if it has been duly performed it is duly celebrated and what is duly celebrate what is due celebration a marriage is said to be duly celebrated if the essential ceremonies of marriage applicable to the parties were observed it means that unless and until the essential ceremonies of marriage have not been observed the marriage cannot be valid one now you see the word marriage remained the same at one point of time marriage means where parties the the man and the woman they treat themselves as husband and wife and behave throughout the their life in another where some formality towards marriage has been done and they started living as husband and wife and the third stage comes when we say that marriage means validly married and valid means when when it was duly celebrated when it was in, in its due form and due form means essential ceremonies of marriage were observed uh, for example for hindus saptapadi and homa these are the two essential ceremonies for a valid hindu marriage now point is that the word marriage remained the same but its meaning got changed over a period of time it changes it, its meaning is not fixed so what jacks derrida 
is suggesting that signifier and signified they do not have any transcendental relationship इनके बीच में कोई शाश्वत संबंध नहीं है बल्कि जो सिग्निफाइड है जो मीनिंग सिग्निफाइड का मतलब मीनिंग मीनिंग है किसी शब्द का वह देश काल परिस्थिति के अनुसार बदलता रहता है मीनिंग चेंजेस ओवर ए पीरियड ऑफ टाइम मीनिंग इज नॉट फिक्स्ड द सेकंड वन इज दैट द सेकंड इंप्लीकेशन ऑफ वर्ड रिकंस्ट्रक्शन इज दैट दैट If we take an onion, a प्याज हम लें और इसकी एक एक परत उतारते चले वेन वी विल फिनिश विद ऑल दस ऑफ दैट ऑनियन वी विल फाइंड दैट देयर इज अ हॉलो बल्ब नथिंग एल्स सो वेन वी यूज द टर्म रिकंस्ट्रक्शन it means that ultimately we reach to nothingness no, that is there is no fixed thing in that union so one layer after another if it is put in a particular manner that becomes onion and if you peel it off layer by layer then you will find that there is nothing there is only hollow wall nothing else so he says that we should not be swayed by the emotion that word has got a different meaning ek shabd ka ek hi arth hai nahi aisa nahi hai number one. then if we move further and we talk about michel foucault michel foucault would suggest that the, there is a discourse and that discourse give rise to knowledge and that knowledge give rise to power so there is in turn there is a uh, uh, innate relationship between power knowledge and discourse discourse is that technique where or in which we move from present to the past we dig it out now take the case of a woman suffering from a disease and that um, disease may be a kind of mental disease or psychological disease at one point of time it was believed that this mental condition of a woman may be because of the fact that she is under the influence of any devil or bad spirit so if we want to know today in 21st century that what is the reason of this disease or this uh, aberration in in the woman we have to go to that level that what kind of perception people were having regarding this kind of deviation regarding this kind of aberration so this is the process of discourse that we should try to know what was the understanding about a particular phenomena in past and what kind of meaning today we are in position to give so gradually the meaning of the particular word that changes when a person has got discourse or adopted discourse he will develop new knowledge and this knowledge will give rise to uh, power power may create knowledge and knowledge will be from uh, discourse these are these three elements are mixed with each other are connected with each other 
So what he suggests that if we want to know from these power discourse and knowledge relationship, at least certain things are very clear that when we when we uh, define what is power, then power is means power means that there must be a holder of power. Traditionally, in in modern uh, uh, modern jurisprudence, whenever we use the term power, it uh, presupposes the holder of that power. <coughs> If there is no holder of power, power is not there. But in postmodern condition, the power does not exist because of its holder. Power is once a person exercises. Power is, is held by a person X, but he is not exercising power. Election commission came into existence by, by constitutional provision ever since 1950. But what is the election commission's power that was exerted by, by TN Shechan? Only after TN Shechan, one could know that there is some uh, commi commission, like election commission in India. Prior to that, people were not very much aware of this election commission. So what Michel Foucault is suggesting is that Power is not by is not known by its ownership. Rather, power is known by its by its exercise. If the holder exercises that power, then power is there. Otherwise, not. Second thing is that in modern society or in modernity, the uh, things flow from or power flow from. Upper side to lower. That is just like uh, your uh, rivers. Uh, they they start from uh, from Himalayan region or higher higher altitude and go towards sea. This flow is from higher altitude to lower altitude. Similar thing is happening in modern society as well. Power flows from higher side to lower side. But in postmodern condition, according to Michel Foucault, uh, Michel M I C H A E L, Michel Foucault, F O U C A U L T, Michel Foucault. Power flows not from above, rather, it flows from below. That is another. The third difference which Michel Foucault is trying to indicate is that in, mod in, in modern condition, the nature of law happens to be repressive. But in postmodern condition, the law is restorative in nature. So what Michel Foucault is trying to suggest is that if we are trying to develop knowledge, we have to follow a procedure called discourse, in which we go deep down, we dig out the past, and from past, we move, we move to the current meaning or current state of affairs. हम इतिहास से लेकर के फिर देखेंगे कैसे अवधारणाएं बदलती रहीं। तो इसका मतलब ये हुआ कि हम आज से कल का हम फ्यूचर नहीं देखेंगे। हम ये देखते हैं कि कैसे पहले समय में किसी शब्द का अर्थ था, किसी किसी घटना या उपक्रम को लेकर के एक लोगों की धारणा बनी थी, अब कैसे वह धारणा धीरे-धीरे कर, करके बदल can be had only if a person is having reason. Tarkik tarike se hi hum is discourse ko shuru kar sakte hai. In that way you can say that 
Michel Foucault is trying to establish that new knowledge can be created either by discourse or by power. And this power will reside to, in those who are having the knowledge. So persons who are not having the knowledge, they will be thrown out of system in postmodern condition. They will be misfit for this. That is the approach of Michel Foucault. Now, most of you might have heard the name of Karl Marx. Karl Marx emphasized upon the production of commodities. And he was emphasizing that the capitalists, they are interested in mass production, but they do not take care of the laborers. So he is talking about a society which is in which capitalists are producing. But the present society, our postmodern society, is such society in which production is not important. Rather, consumption has become more important. Agar aap 2020 so matra hai wo rahi hai. List. Iska kya matlab hai? इसका मतलब यह हो गया कि हम लोग कंज्यूम ज्यादा कर रहे हैं एंड व्हेन द कंजम्पशन इंक्रीजेस अभी आप एक कोई सामान खरीद करके ले आइए तो देखिएगा कि उसकी उसकी पैकेजिंग कैसे रहती है और वो कूड़ा में कन्वर्ट हो जाता है तो कूड़े की मात्रा बढ़ती है इसका मतलब है यह हो गया कि हमारी जो सोसाइटी है वो सोसाइटी ऑफ कंजम्पशन a consumer oriented society everything we are consuming we are consuming data hum log aapas mein baat kar rahe hain data consume kar rahe hain we are consuming energy we are consuming lot of things but so far the production is concerned we are not concerned majority of us are not concerned that how it is being produced who are behind it so and the second thing is that Consumption is of what? Consumption is of reality or it is only in appearance. So consumption in postmodern condition is not always of reality. It is of simulations as well. When we tune our television, we may find a photograph of maybe what you call Osama bin Laden. Now, this photograph of Osama bin Laden is not the true picture. True picture in the sense that he is uh, uh, this photo which is appearing on the screen is not directly taken from him. Rather, it is a photo taken from another photo and which might have been taken from another. So in, in modern, in a postmodern society, there is no original copy. Every copy is additional copy or can, you can call carbon copy, but not the original. And we are simply consuming these signs, symbols, and simula simulation as simulacrum. If you visit to a garment shop, you will find that certain McQueen's are placed there in the, in the showcase. And we are attracted by that McQueen. That how this particular dress will suit you, you will decide not on your own. Instead, it is done by a simulacrum. There is one model, and that model, male or female, is putting on that. If that model is not there, 
then what seller ultimately does? He puts that cloth on his own body, on his own person, and tries to convince you that look here, sir, if you have this, you will like look like this. So point is that we are consuming simulacrum, we are consuming science, but not the reality. This society becomes a society of hyper reality. What John Bordrilla is trying to, uh, it, it, this theory of simulation is of John Bordrilla, uh, J E A N, John Bordrilla, B A U T R I L L A R D, John Bordrilla. John Bordrilla is indicating that. In postmodern condition, the behavior of the man changes so far as his consumption pattern changes. His consumption pattern changes in the form of simulation, not in the form of reality. He, whatever he is looking, that is only a simulation, only a science. To understand this simulation principle of John Bordrilla. There was a time uh, in history when for entertainment, Tamasha was organized or Madari people were there or circus was uh, staged. But gradually, and, and if you talk about the, what you call Puppet. Then there were certain simulations which were actually controlled by human being, but they were not human beings. They were only the models. But when Tamasha, Natak, all these things were held at that point of time, real people appeared on the stage. भले ये हो सकता था कि एक महिला का रोल एक पुरुष कर रहा हो या एक पुरुष का रोल एक महिला कर रही हो लेकिन वहां पर मनुष्य ही आता था उसके बाद जब आप कठपुतलियों की तरफ आ गए तो कठपुतली में मनुष्य को रिप्लेस कर दिया उस प्रतिकृति ने सिमुलेशन ने और हमको ऐसा लगता है कि वो जो है मनुष्य ही है और जब समाज और आगे बढ़ता है तो वहां पर हम इस रियल पॉपेट को भी छोड़ देते हैं और केवल और केवल स्क्रीन पर कुछ लोगों की फोटो की फोटो देखते हैं तो देर इज नथिंग रियल देर इज नथिंग रियल ओनली थिंग इज सिंबल साइन एंड सैमुलेशन इन विच द मैन हैज चेंज इज कंज्यूमिंग Behavior or pattern. So, अगर हम हमारा consumption का pattern बदल रहा है, हम क्या चीज खरीद रहे हैं, वो केवल simulation है, reality नहीं है. तो निश्चित रूप से आप ये कह सकते हैं कि ऐसे समाज के व्यवहार को regulate करने के लिए हमको कुछ ऐसे technique का प्रयोग करना पड़ेगा law making में. जो कि इस तरह के व्यवहार को कल को रेगुलेट कर सके इफ यू आर टॉकिंग अबाउट पब्लिकेशन ऑफ समथिंग विच इट कैन बी कॉल्ड एज ऑफ सीन तो ठीक है आप उसके लिए हमारे यहां कानून है जिसमें कि हम ऑप्शनिटी को कंट्रोल कर सकते हैं बट इफ इट इज बीइंग डन थ्रू सोशल मीडिया सोशल मीडिया है बिग वे इट इज ए न्यू mode of communication so if it is being done in such manner then we have to modify our law in such a way that we could reach to the person who is the culprit and deal with him if we continue with to hold our law which was made on the principle of modernity then perhaps our 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 purpose will not will never be solved 
Now, if we try to assemble these thinkers together, then regarding postmodernity, we can say that postmodernity is such a condition of knowledge and culture which rejects meta narratives. And in place of totality, it talks about difference. Number one. Second thing is that the narratives need not be global. Rather, narratives must be local. आप बहुत ऊंचे सिद्धांतों को ले आकर के रख देंगे धरा धरातल पर वो काम नहीं करेगा मान लीजिए कि साहब आप डेमोक्रेसी की बात करते हैं डेमोक्रेसी में भी सेवेंटी फाइव ईयर्स ओल्ड इन इंडिया बट द कॉन्सेप्ट इज बारोड फ्रॉम अदर सोयल कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ ऑफ मॉडर्न ऑफ डेमोक्रेसी इज दैट एवरी पर्सन इज इक्वल एवरी पर्सन इज हैविंग इक्वल वेट हिज वैल्यू ऑफ वोट इज द सेम इन रिस्पेक्टिव ऑफ कास्ट रिलीजन बट इन इंडिया वेन वी टॉक अबाउट लोकल इन इंडिया वेन द सेम इज ट्रांसलेटेड देन वी फाइंड दैट द बिहेवियर ऑफ द वोटर चेंजेस he is divided on the line of the religion caste regionalism so on and so forth so he is divided in various ways he is not he does not treat himself to be equal uh, uh, to be equal to other that of others aapki jaati alag hai hamari jaati alag hai hum apne jaati wale ko vote denge aap apne ko dijiye na dijiye ye aapki ichcha hai so democracy may be good that may be a meta narrative grand grand principle but when it comes to the ground reality we find that it would meta narrative field local narrative function when we introduce system of panchayati raj or nagar panchayat by 73rd constitutional amendment what was the purpose purpose was that the problem before the nation may be different problem before the state or province may be different but if we create third layer or third tier that will take the responsibility for the development of the lower rung of the society agar hum ye teesra tier bana dete hain panchayati raj ka to jo gaon ke log hain unka bhi vikas hoga unke bhi जो सड़क पानी बिजली की जो आवश्यकता है उसकी भी पूर्ति होगी और नहीं तो जो देश की समस्या है वो डिफरेंट है प्रदेश की समस्या डिफरेंट है जो गांव की समस्या है वो एड्रेस ही नहीं हो पा रहा है सो यू कैन से दैट द ग्रैंड प्रिंसिपल ऑफ इक्वलिटी इक्वलिटी यूनिवर्सलिटी एंड रैशनलिटी दैट माइट बी अप्लीकेबल एट अदर प्लैक बट मे नॉट बी अप्लीकेबल लोकली सो ऑल दी पोस्ट मॉडर्न थिंकर at least they share one common thing that grand moral, grand principle of uh, of uh, society has failed and another important aspect is that social institutions which have been created in the era of modernity they have uh, they have crumbled or toot rahi hai agar aap मैरिज एज एन इंस्टीट्यूशन देते हैं तो मैरिज एज एन इंस्टीट्यूशन इज ब्रेकिंग अदर इंस्टीट्यूशन दैट इज दैट इज इन स्टेट ऑफ डेनिग्रेशन ये नीचे की तरफ जा रहे हैं इनके जो मूल्य थे जिस मूल्यों के साथ इनकी स्थापना हुई थी क्योंकि हमने आपको कल बताया था कि मॉडर्निटी जो है वो मानता है कि यह मूल्यों की गठरी है इट इज इट इज द बंडल ऑफ वैल्यूज So the values with which certain institutions were created, they they are crumbling. If we take the institution of election commission, for example, without having any political bias, 
then you will find or you might have observed that if the conduct of the ruling party is involved, they prefer to remain silent. But if the conduct of the opposition is involved, the election commission imposes various restrictions on them. Institution is, must be impartial to all, be it a ruling party or be it be in opposition. But no, the institutions are crumbling. The executive is failing. The parliament is, is failing in its fundamental duties. Parliament is passing the law without having discussion, without debating, without referring it to the select committee, without collecting opinion from the public at large. Who are so there is no debate in modern society. Institutions are crumbling. So the postmodernists will say that all the institutions which were the creation of modernity that, that will that will become weak. And the another point is that when we talk about the society, then in that society there is at most fragmentation. The element of solidarity which existed in the time of modernity and even in the pre-modern era that solidarity does not exist. Abhi, ek chota sa example li liye. Uh, again, without having any political uh, bias, that at one point of time when there was issue pertaining to students, the students of entire country used to unite and put their demand. But now what is happening? Because the society has become fragmented. Okay, it is not with UPNs or it is not with the Delhi. Therefore, why should we go in that? The point is that the element of solidarity which existed in pre-modern society and post-modern and, and modern society, that solidarity has also crumbled. So there, there is a lack of mutual faith and trust. The, the, the uh, relationship between husband and wife that is uh, coming to such a stage, such a such a stage where reconciliation is not possible. There is no reason why they are interested in seeking divorce. The Re -re reason has uh, <coughs> disappeared. Another important point is regarding postmodernity that in postmodern condition, the uh, what you call uh, the emphasis is on individual, on, uh, on fragmentation. Earlier, the law, once it was made, it was made applicable to all. But now, we are making difference between child. Now, we are having juvenile justice act. Applicable to whom? Applicable to children below the age of 18. Now there is a demand that girl children should be given special protection. So rights of girl children, uh, girl child must be protected. Rights of women, rights of transgender. So this society is being fragmented. Earlier, it was united. If one law was passed, that law was applicable to all. But presently, in modern society, a postmodern society, one law applicable to all that cannot be imagined. Jitne bhi prakar ke vikhandan ya fragmentation ho sakte hai, utna aap karte jai. So, ek mahilao ke liye kanun ho gaya, 
एक पुरुष बालकों के लिए हो गया एक महिला बालिकों के लिए हो गया इसमें फिर जो है आप ट्रांसजेंडर की बात करेंगे फिर आप कहेंगे कि साहब जो हिली एरिया के रहने वाले लोग हैं उनके राइट जो नॉन हिली या प्लेन एरिया के हैं उनके राइट इसलिए सबके रिक्वायरमेंट एक है ये पोस्ट मॉडर्निटी ये मानती है ये तो भ्रम फैलाया गया कि देर इज वन ट्रूथ देर इज टोटैलिटी देर इज यूनिवर्सलिटी और देर इज वन ग्रैंड नेरेटिव अपलिकेबल टू ऑल दिस मिथ दैट मस्ट बी एक्सप्लोडेड सो यू विल फाइंड दैट इवन इन एजुकेशन अर्लियर certain disciplines were available for study now you will find that lot of fragmentation in the education has been made earlier a person if he was a neurosurgeon then he was expected to perform surgery of brain spine both but now you will find that brain surgery is being performed by someone and spinal surgery is performed by some other person under the specialty then general uh, this uh, gastrological surgeons or gastro surgeons upper upper part of the elementary canal and lower part of the elementary canal they have got their different expertise so there is again fragmentation pehle to डॉक्टर साहब आ गए घर में तो कान में भी दिक्कत है तब भी डॉक्टर साहब देख लिए नाक में दिक्कत हुई तब भी दिक्कत हुई देख लिए हार्ट में दिक्कत हुई तब भी देख लिए बट नाउ वी कैन नॉट डेयर टू थिंक अबाउट दैट इफ इट इज ई एन टी सर्जन देन ओनली ही विल एग्जामिन ऑन दैट इफ इट इज आई सर्जन देन ओनली ही विल टच द आई इफ ए पर्सन इज एन ऑर्थोपीडिशियन देन ओनली ही विल बी इन टाइटल टू गो फॉर deformity etc in bone or fracture in bone otherwise not point is that the knowledge has is not uniform knowledge is fragmented to ek physiotherapist rahega to ek pharmacologist rahega ek jo hai surgeon hoga ek medicine ka hoga surgeon mein bhi 50 tarah ke surgeon honge kuch log aise honge jo robotic surgery karte honge kuch log manual surgery karte honge traditional surgery so ultimately the the knowledge is fragmented and it of course it it may give market to new branches of knowledge maybe microbiology maybe uh, pharmaceuticals in a, in a sector or very other sector but certainly it 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 has the market potentiality but the point is that knowledge is one and unified a doctor is supposed to know each and everything regarding human body that is only a myth and that is to be done away with there are distinct part in the body and of those part every person must have distinct knowledge about that to koi hath ka specialist hai koi pair ka specialist hai is tarah se baat aa rahi hai abhi tak to ye tha ki sab doctor hai वो सब देख लेते थे फिर क्या हुआ कि ये नर्व देखेंगे ये सर्कुलेटरी सिस्टम देखेंगे ये डाइजेस्टिव देखेंगे ये टीबी और चेस्ट के होंगे इस तरह से हुआ अब उसमें भी आगे डिफरेंशिएशन हो गया तो डिफरेंस नॉट दी सेमनेस दैट इज द बेसिक प्रिंसिपल ऑफ पोस्ट मॉडर्न नाउ इफ वी प्रोसीड फर्दर दैट दोसाइटी इज चेंजिंग देन you will observe that the political entity called state 
that is also under the state of fragmentation the best example can be given uh, uh, with reference to uh, that of uh, what you call uh, ussr it ussr united states uh, united soviet russia it was having many other states chechnya ukraine uh, georgia so on and so forth in 1991 it got separated or divided so post modern condition is responsible for fragmentation of the country as well post modern while on one side it may bring individualism it may claim that it will give uh, happiness we will assess that bit later but one thing is very clear that states are this are being disintegrated टूट रहे विखंडन हो रहा है इंडिया के संदर्भ में अगर हम बात करें तो पिछले 25 सालों में आपने ये देखा होगा कि कई राज्यों का विभाजन हुआ यूपी से उत्तराखंड अलग हो गया बिहार से झारखंड अलग हो गया आंध्र प्रदेश से तेलंगाना अलग हो गया मध्य प्रदेश से छत्तीसगढ़ अलग हो गया ये अलगाव का होना क्या शो करता है रीजन चाहे आप जो भी दें कि आप छोटा स्टेट हो छोटा स्टेट होगा तो उसको मैनेज किया जा सकता है बढ़िया छोटे छोटे स्टेट बनेंगे तो हर राज्य में का जो डेवलपमेंट का जो तरीका है वो लेकिन फ्रॉम द व्यू ऑफ ए पोस्ट मॉडर्न स्टूडेंट ऑफ पोस्ट मॉडर्निटी यू कैन से दैट टेंडेंसी ऑफ प्रेगमेंटेशन दैट स्टार्ट Uh, those who uh, are from west bengal they will appreciate that uh, people are demanding that there should be division of uh, bengal into two north bengal should be separate state and southern part of the bihar of bengal should be another state then similar thing is in assam upper assam kachhar and mainland these three states should be there so demand for and even the existing up purvanchal should be another state then bundelkhand and then harit pradesh or the western up so people are going for fragmentation that that is the problem now the question is that if we go for fragmentation whether it is affecting our allegiance with respect to that or not once you are fragmented then your all relationship with the earlier state that will be severed ab koi ye nahi kahega ki hum madhya pradesh ke hain wo kahega ki hum chatisgarh hain koi ye nahi kahega ki hum bihar ke hain kahega hum jharkhandi hain koi ye nahi kahega ki hum up ke hain sab apne aap ko ab uttarakhandi wale why it is that the moment one state uh, is divided then it not only divide it not only divide the territory but it also divides the attitude of human being from that of the other ab dekhi ki russia aur ukraine mein hi aisi mara mari ho gayi hai ki third world war ka log expectation karne lage hain aisi sthiti mein aa gaya and at one point of time ukraine was part of us at that the uh, another uh, significant point is that when we are talking with reference to post modernity then post modernity believes that the development can not be in linear direction agar aap vikas ka siddhant dekhen to chahe wo himalay durkhin ka ho weber ka ho लामार्क का हो डार्विन का हो किसी का भी जो भी विकासवादी लोग हर्बर्ट स्पेंसर का हो जी क्लियर डायरेक्शन में ये आज कल ये आगे हम बढ़ते जाएंगे बट इन पोस्ट मॉडर्न कंडीशन दी कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ इवोल्यूशन एंड ग्रोथ इज नॉट लीनियर रादर इट इज फ्रेगमेंटेड इसको कैसे समझेंगे 
yeah, the, the growth and evolution, the growth is not linear, it is fragmented. So, after India ki policy thi, wa yeh tha ki jab hum jire jire aage padhenge, to humare sabhi logon ka ek saath vikas hoga. Jire jire hi hoga, lekin log aage jire jire padhenge. लेकिन जब हम पोस्ट मॉडर्न कंडीशन की तरफ आते हैं तो उसमें हम यह पाएंगे कि विकास तो हुआ लेकिन विकास कुछ लोगों का हुआ पूरे पॉपुलेशन को अगर हम 135 करोड़ मान लें तो हम यह कह सकते हैं कि हां 10000 लोगों का विकास हुआ बाकी जो पॉपुलेशन है वो उसका विकास नहीं हुआ तो द पॉइंट इज दैट द ग्रोथ इज लीनियर that is the concept of modernity. All will grow with the passage of time. And in postmodern condition, few will grow in no time. That is the difference. Abhi, if you look survey the economic survey, then in a very few years, many people will come to the multi-millionaire. This is the first time. So, in the first time, तो पोस्ट मॉडर्न कंडीशन जब भी होगी तो उसमें हम समग्रता का भाव नहीं होगा कि हमारा विकास हो रहा है तो बगल वाले का भी विकास होना चाहिए केवल हमारा विकास हो आई एम आई विल बी हैप्पी इन दैट और मैन विल नॉट बी गवर्न्ड बाय रीजन वो इमोशन से गवर्न होगा अगर आज की तारीख में किसी स्टूडेंट से कहा जाए कि भाई आपने अपने आंसर बुक में ये ये पॉइंट नहीं लिखे हैं। Therefore your marks have been deducted. The student will argue that yes, whatever you are saying that is not there in the script, but something has been written in my script, and on that only the marks will be given to me. Whether this kind of argument can be said to be rational argument? और इट इज शेयरली बेस्ड ऑन इमोशन हां भाई हमने कुछ लिखा है तो कुछ नंबर हमको मिल जाना चाहिए और जो नंबर मिला है उसको ही इज नॉट सेटिस्फाइड विद दैट इन पोस्ट मॉडर्न कंडीशन द प्रॉब्लम इज दैट द कंडीशंस ऑफ मॉडर्निटी रैशनलिटी इक्वलिटी एंड यूनिवर्सलिटी दैट ब्रेक्स दैट क्रंबल्स विद अटमोस्ट स्पीड विद ग्रेटेस्ट स्पीड इन व्हिच the thought process changes in which the political system changes in which the diplomatic relation changes in which the society social structure which was of cohesive nature that is converted into disjunction or, or fragmentation we cannot look into the totality rather we have to see fragmented hum ye dekhna chahenge ki agar हमारे कार्यकाल में दस लोगों का भी विकास हो गया तो भारत विकसित हो गया लेकिन दस लोगों को विकसित करने में कितने करोड़ लोगों की जान चली गई हमको उससे मतलब नहीं भले हम नारा कुछ भी दें लेकिन फैक्ट ऑफ द फैक्ट इज दैट पोस्ट मॉडर्न कंडीशन इज ऑलवेज बेनिफिशियल टू अ फ्यू नॉट टू ऑल वाइल दॉडर्न कंडीशन और मॉडर्निटी it talks about each and every one uh, you might have heard uh, the uh, human rights declaration of united nations 1948 that uses the term universal declaration of human rights 1948 this universal declaration of human rights un uh, declaration of human rights is talking about man Wherever he is placed on this globe, he is entitled for certain rights. That was based on the universality concept. But now we are saying that no, each and every person is distinct, having his distinct location and, and expectation. It, it may be mod, it may be concept of modernity based on rationality that once a dam has been constructed, it will generate electricity from which 
industry can be opened and several persons may be put in employment. It is based on reason. But now, if you are constructing constructing any dam, big dam, mega dam project, then there will be a lot of hue and cry. Why? Reason is that you are talking about construction of dam which will supply electricity to a company or a factory where several persons will be employed. But what will happen to us? Who will be affected by uh, by flood? By, by the creation of that reservoir. When Rihal Dam was made, Rihal Dam was not going to go to the town. But the thing is that if you sacrifice this, then in times to come, uh, the, the condition of the country will improve because of uh, generation of electricity. At that point of time, they agreed. But if you raise this time in the which we change circumstances hein? immediately, or you might have come across Sardar Sarovar Dam. There, there was huge uh, vegetation led by Medha particles that where these uh, tribals will go. The point is that in modern condition, we talk about others as well. But in postmodern kind of, uh, uh, condition, we are not concerned with the others. It is self-centered approach. So I would like to conclude my today's lecture <coughs> by this note that postmodern condition is that where fragmentation takes place, totality is absent. Number one. Number two, it is postmodernity is a condition of knowledge and culture. It is, it is the era of fragmentation and deconstruction. It is the era in which the meta-narratives are grand narratives. The narratives, they are rejected. And man is individualized. Now, we cannot say that all men, they are having universal characters. No. Man from uh, tribal area of Santhal is different from a tribal area of, of uh, Uttarakhand, maybe tribal area of Bengal. So we cannot say that tribals, they are the same. No, they are having different uh, expectations and attitudes. In that way, you can say that uh, postmodernity has given individual is, is space to individualism <coughs> to develop in faster manner than in comparison to that of the other. Now, I think that another class we will be having in, in sometimes in February. At that point of time, we will try to connect the concept of postmodernity with that of law. That will be our uh, last lecture uh, so far as Postmodernity is concerned. This modernity postmodernity lecture to part discuss modernity ne kaise law framing ko influence kiya aur kis prakar se postmodernity law ke samne challenges utpann kar rahi if you are not selling and selling and purchasing the real commodity, instead you are purchasing data, which, which is intangible. You are purchasing in senior symbol, not the real shirt. Then how this can be dealt with by law? How law can be dealt? How can law be effective in dealing with combining two Fragmented state to one. The fragmentation hoga, to the stage ye bhi a sakti hai, ki kush log ye kahe ki hum ab aapke desh se nahi judenge. Hello, haan sir, mein paanch minute aapko phone kar raha. So, 
अब हमारा पोस्ट मॉडर्निटी और पोस्ट मॉडर्निटी के कुछ बेसिक कॉन्सेप्ट रखने के बाद हम ये अगले में प्रयास करेंगे कि हाउ कैन बी कनेक्टेड विद लॉ इफ यू हैव एनी प्रॉब्लम इफ यू हैव एनी डाउट यू मे आस्क एंड आई विल ट्राई टू आंसर दैट अगर आपके सामने कोई समस्या है कोई चीज नहीं समझ में आ रही है कॉन्सेप्चुअल लेवल पर तो हम उसके बारे में सोच सकते हैं समझ सकते हैं और बताने का प्रयास करेंगे मिस्टर शुभम शुक्ला शुभम शुक्ला आर यू देयर मयूरी समरेंद्र चौहान मिस्टर समरेंद्र चौहान मिस्टर ए के मिश्रा आर यू देयर कृतिका साहू यस डू यू हैव एनी प्रॉब्लम इन अंडरस्टैंडिंग फेब्रुवरी next saturday sunday uh, next friday saturday okay thank you very much yes sir thank you so much sir thank you